right, guys, welcome to The Pulse. We told you we'd be back every week, so we're doing it again, and we are excited today. We've got a Philly guy, and and I know some of you watch this nationally, but respect to the Philly guy. Uh, TV host, musician, musical director, uh, teacher of music, but I'm going to go back to Philly guy, Kevin Eubanks, joins us on The Pulse. Hello, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I was checking out your show, the opening show. Man, it was beautiful. Um, Very nice, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I've got this whole, you're a musical guy, so you get all this. I've got this soundboard and everything in front of me. Right. That I don't really know how to use. So I'm sitting here acting like I understand all this. I feel like I should hit some sort of button and there should be theme music or something playing for you when we introduce you. (laughs) That's all right. See all this stuff back here? Yeah. I call somebody that comes over and presses the button for me. <laughs> if I want right. to pretend like I know what's back here, <laughs> it's just a prop for this moment. You started right. smiling when I, I focused on Philly guy. Yes. That's still yeah. near and dear. Absolutely. I, um, I've been living in L.A. for a long time now. I, always, I go back to Philly lots during the year. And uh, my brothers, my mom, everybody, I grew up, all my friends. Um, Philly is, is, is where it all started. Musically, everything. It, um, it's music, music that comes out of Philly, the vibe that comes out of it. You can literally, you can be in different parts of the world. You're at the lobby of a hotel and you hear some music that's from Philly. It's, it's larger and more uh, pervasive than people might imagine. I don't think people get us. When you tell all of that and, and what Philly means and how Philly shapes you, you know, into someone, it may have shaped us into different people, but Philly definitely, it, it does shape you, yes? Especially when you're that close to a place like New York and you go to Philly and people are Philly. I mean, whatever that <laughs> means. Because I grew up wanting to play third base for the Phillies. That wasn't going to happen. I want to play the 76ers. Not going to happen. And uh, you just kept moving until you found something you could play. That, let me play guitar. Let me try something else. <laughs> but no, it's it's a, a great feeling coming out of out of Philadelphia and the 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 heart of the people. All of that is 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 for real. It's for real. We're not making it up. People know you for a lot of different things, but I mean, obviously, predominantly your music. So, how did that kind of you started Settlement Music School? Correct. My mother. It's a master's degree in, in music education and classical uh, music. My, her brother, my uncle, Ray Bryant, Tommy Bryant, they played with, you know, uh, with Lee Morgan, Coltrane, tons of people, Nancy Wilson, a whole, whole lot of people. So music was in the family. It just grew up and grew up. It was really, we had no, ch- no chance to do anything else <laughs> because we were so overwhelmed with with music all the time hearing uh Bach music when she's teaching lessons she taught in uh in public school for 35 years teaching music so that's where we we grew up in so it was just a natural thing for us for us to do we try to inspire and you try to inspire you teach you do all of that for young people but when you kind of pattern that you had patterns for you now, is that part of that message, why you're into the schools or why you're teaching or why you're actively in the community? When we're growing up, um, we're going back and forth to school, catching a bus, doing what, you know. But back then, seeing, seeing kids walking around with instruments, going back and forth to school, that was a normal thing. That was in the neighborhood. And people liked that. Um, everybody you ran into, they say, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep playing your music. And we're just going to school. We're like, what are they talking? You know, we just keep, we're going to do it. And, and as you grow up, you realize that it influences neighborhoods. It influences people to see children, um, participating in things like that. And once you get used to that, showing up on time, playing, you know, recitals at your school, things like that. We don't know the value of that, but all of that is extremely important. There are violence issues uh, in Philly right now. 
And there's also this kind of, of comparison or this parallel where the in quotes extracurriculars, music out of the schools and those types of things out of the schools. Do you believe, and, and you're involved in this, that making sure the music is in the schools really is one of those potential solutions? It really uh, disturbs me that music is not just so much into the school systems. I don't understand why it comes out it's not just music. I um, I don't see music in, in in public schools as music education or music is over here and education is over here and music is over here and history and science is over here. All of that is the same thing. Music is education. So it's not music education, it's education. And it will help you, um, it'll help you along in, in when you get into the into the workplace where you have to work with other people mm -hmm. if you start doing that when you're a child when you're in elementary school middle school high school and you get to study at school that means you have to show up on time you have to take direction you have to listen to what's going on you you come together you can see that this person this person we kept come together and we make this music and people come to the school to see it it teaches you to uh, practice to have discipline all of those things you need that when you're into the workplace anyway welcome back to the pulse today we're spending some time with kevin eubanks hearing all about his experiences really enjoying the discussion so let's get back to it you had have a successful musical career and then some kind of way <laughs> tell me how this happens when you're you're doing the successful music thing you and your family are doing the successful music thing and then you end up as part of the band on the tonight show with jay leno how does right. how does that even happen i was you know i was touring i was traveling around different continents just i was a musician i was making records i was and that's what I always want to do. I just want to play music and, and playing with great musicians. And uh, <laughs> then, then a good friend of mine, um, Bramford, Bramford Marcellus, yeah. is a good, good friend of mine. We went to school together in Boston at Berkeley College. And uh, we were on tour together. And he comes and says, hey, man, you want to, um, you know, um, I'm going to be doing a band at the uh, Tonight Show with Jay, with Jay Leno. And, you know, why don't you, you, know, why don't you come in a band with us? I said, okay, I was getting a little burnt out, traveling so much all the time. So uh, so I did. And then after a while, they asked, they said, would you care to be the the, uh, the music director of the show? I said, okay, I'll do it. Um, I want to get back on the road. I want to get back to playing again. And uh, uh, 20 years later. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> 20 years and, later. And, uh, and all the people that you meet, a lot of um, everything from politicians to actors, of course, and you just learn so much. Yeah. You go around and would play for uh, been Afghanistan, uh, Avian Air Base in Italy for the troops that were going in to dig up mine, you know, minefields yeah. in different countries. And they were 19, 20 years old. And you get to talk with all these people. You start mm -hmm. to realize that music can, is kind of backstage pass to so many things what does a musical director do because i know you play music i know you right. pull it together but in in all of the different reading that i've done you had to do a whole bunch of stuff you had to just come up with music sometimes you had to talk celebrities down like, like you <laughs> i don't think that was in the job description when they said come on and be musical director well um it turns out that all of it is listening. And when you're, especially if you're on a, um, if you're on a show uh, like the Tonight Show, if you're working with people and, and, and not just there, but after a while you see that is, is everywhere, how can I contribute to making the situation feel better? Okay. So the, the, the idea is, you know, okay, how can, I, how can I use music to bring everything together? If I just go about the things that I want to hear, then you might be, not listening enough you're not contributing enough to the the overall uh picture of what's going on 
And after a while, it just turns into it. And then you kind of naturally go, well, this music will suit this because it brings everything together, makes everybody feel more comfortable. I'd imagine that's that's really requires a level of talent that that touring may not. Touring, you can do your thing. But when you're sitting there on a show like that, you have to do the complimentary thing to everything that's going on around you. That's an excellent point. That's, that's really well said. <laughs> um, um, you're absolutely right. So when you're in that situation, what you feel is what will make everything better? What, how do you bring that out? How do you, um, uh, it even gets to the point if, you know, cause I was doing this so long with Jay and we're still doing it with our, our new yeah. show is, is that, um, when Jay's telling jokes or if a guest comes on and Jay hits punchline or, you know, when I start, you know, well, how do we do that? Do I, am I getting in the way if I bring the music in and how do I keep that energy, the, the comedic energy moving and moving. And after a while I started seeing it the same, if I'm playing behind a sax player, if I'm playing in a club in New York, and the sax player is playing something, I play chords behind it, we call it comping. You do the same thing if, you know, Jay's telling jokes and punchline comes, either, you know, I'm strumming or I'm just laughing because it's just funny, but the timing of it becomes natural. Welcome back to The Pulse. Today we're spending some time with Kevin Eubanks. The discussion keeps going. We don't want to wait anymore. So let's get back to it. You probably told this story a, a thousand times, but they put you in there to deal with celebrities. And I'm sure there's been a lot of them, but the <laughs> one that, that people kept asking you about was because of the status of a diva, Diana Roth. Oh, man. <laughs> so what, what happened with Diana Roth? You heard about that? I heard about that. We do a little bit of research <laughs> okay. on the Pulse. Diana Ross was going to be on the uh, show because she was going to do the halftime. And I was so excited. I grew up with the Supremes. I grew up with all that. I was, oh, I never met Diana Ross before. I was excited. So uh, they were getting ready to do their sound check. I'm sitting in the audience just because th this is a hero for me. Right. And uh, <laughs> Diana Ross didn't come out. She didn't come out. And, and I can feel everybody getting nervous. And uh, she's in her, her dressing room. And uh, I said, Diana Ross isn't coming out. She's not coming out. I said, why are you? Right? I don't know. <laughs> What's that got you to know? do with me? <laughs> don't bring me into this. <laughs> so I was going, time was running, time was running. And uh, they, they finally said, Kev, could you just knock on her door and, and maybe see what's, you know? I said, um, I have no idea. I've never met Miss Ross before. I just know I love her, her music. And to this day, I do. And I said, could you just knock on the door? I knock on the door and through the door, somebody says, who is it? I said, <laughs> I'm Kevin <laughs> and I'm, I'm the music director here. I just, uh, and they, he cracks the door and I said, they, they wanted me to wonder if Miss Ross is going to, you know, do the sound check, but really, I just want to meet Miss Ross, and I just want her autograph. I, that's their thing. <laughs> I, I don't want to be in the way of anything. So they let me in, and I just said, Miss Ross, this is an honor to me. My parents would be, oh, you were in there with Diana Ross, and I just said, I'm supposed to come in here somehow, ask you to go on stage, but I'm, in my mind. I just wanted to meet you and it's beautiful. Thanks you for all the music that you've done and just inspired us since I was a child. And thanks for letting me in. I appreciate it. And, and then I just yeah. left. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> Wait back. I did, I did my part. Like I, I, I did I what did. I could do. And I, and I go out and I say, I tried, I tried. <laughs> I had their autograph. So I was, I was, I was in heaven. And uh, a little while after that, about 10 minutes later, she came out. It worked out yeah. just fine, and you get to take credit for that. People are so used to people not being just real and humble and genuinely interested in meeting them or, or treating them some different way that you tend to get a really positive response with people when you're just real. Like, it's like, listen, I, I ain't coming here to tell you nothing. I just love you, Miss Roth. You know, and That's just be it. respectful. That's it. That's it. Uh, and that opportunity is is 
larger and deeper when you um, you meet so many people that have done so much. I hope we run into each other in Philly, and because I'm going to ask you some things. <laughs> Look, how you know how you become such a journalist at the same time get some meatiness out of the conversation, and at the same time people are feeling good or feel like they're they they're inspired by something that they hear you talk about it or somebody asks answers a question the right question that you ask someone and i would say that would help me get do interviews so one day maybe in philly we can <laughs> we Listen, can when you have a when you're in philly we'll, we'll do that <laughs> people know things yeah and um because i was always really shy but from going to hollywood and, and meeting everybody and so now I have no problem going up to people and say, excuse me, I don't, I don't know you. I'm not a stalker, but you know, you know something that I don't, is there something that you can impart to me you think I should know? Welcome back to The Pulse. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right back to the discussion with Kevin Eubanks. All right, we've talked this much time, have not mentioned You Bet Your Life. <laughs> so. There you <laughs> <laughs> My bad. There, there's this TV show that, that you're on, uh, you and Jay Leno doing it. What was, what was really interesting to me, though, is that your, your initial relationship was musically based, right? That's what you were doing with The Tonight Show. And now you're your co-host. I called my friends back in Philly. <laughs> I said, man, I'm going to do this, uh, uh, this show. And it doesn't feel like a band... It should be there. It doesn't feel like I should be playing. I think being a co-host might be what the show really needs, but I was so used to to being in front of a camera with the guitar yeah. that it was a little bit weird to get into it. And um, I'm thankful to the, uh, the, the people that are directing the show and uh, they left it up to me and said, well, if you really feel that you want to have the guitar, then you decide, which is very respectful of them to to put it that way. Like they were cool, cool with you just came to the table. You're like, you know what? I'm over this whole musical director thing. I don't need the guitar. We, <laughs> we're going to co-host the show. And everybody, I mean, that that's a tremendous level of respect that people were like, uh, all right. Right. You know, and uh, so I'm I'm just in a situation to learn something else. You you and Jay Leno have been together for years. Like you've been doing yeah. different shows for years now. And and in theory, he could have gone and gotten a whole lot of people you know, to join him on that show. You guys seem like you're just legitimately cool. Like your cameras aside, show aside, you guys just clicked. Like you're legitimately friends. Right, is that right. is that now I don't imagine you'd tell me, no, nah, I don't really like that guy. I mean, we just did that for TV. But <laughs> it feels real. Like is that like that's a real relationship that's developed over those years? It's it's something that has definitely just grown and grown and grown into that and we work well together. I, I really like working with, with Jay and um and you learn from situations and at the same time you don't force it it just becomes something and after a while when it really starts to gel there's a certain amount of just kind of natural trust that has to happen so no pressure at all just letting it flow in front of millions of people yeah just just go with it <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all good I, you know i'm on board couple more things as we try to inspire uh, on the pulse you've shared a lot of it but if you had to put your finger on best advice you've gotten I would hear my uh, my grandmother saying, go with your first mind. And I didn't know what that was for a long time. What, do I have a second one back here? <laughs> okay, I, okay I grandma. <laughs> you know, go with your first mind, which means your instinct. That's it. That's what we got. Kevin Eubanks, I appreciate you taking some time with us. It's been a pleasure. And um, I, I had some questions for you, maybe some time when we're kicking it. Um, uh, this stuff I want to ask you about the life of a journalist. I mean, you know, it's that is, oh man, you get to ask, you know, you you're there for a reason. You're doing this. You're you're enlightening people to what's happening. 
to me, that is, that's, that's music. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today on The Pulse. Really enjoy the opportunity to sit down and talk to Kevin Eubanks. And we want to make sure that we remind you that you can get the whole interview raw, unedited as a podcast. So make sure you go subscribe, download The Pulse with Bill Anderson podcast, any place that podcasts are available. And we'll be back again to do it all this time next week.